Hey guys, Richard Holder here. It's time for some big block Chevy mods. Normally when we go to the wrecking yard, we select the Gen 6 with the bigger ports and the hydraulic roller cam. But you know what? There's a lot of Gen 5 guys out there with the throttle body injection and the flat tappet camshafts. So what do you say? Let's see some mods for the Gen 5. In this video, we're going to show you some modifications to the Gen 5 peanut port motor. So we went to the wrecking yard and got a stock motor and ran it in stock trim. And no, unfortunately, we did not run it with a throttle body injection. We ran it carbureted. Then we added a camshaft. Then we got a little bit more serious with our mods, but retained the peanut port heads. Then we, yes, replaced the peanut port heads with something even better. Let's check it out. The very best starting point, obviously, for any <laughs> 454 comparison is a junkyard 454, and that's exactly what we did here. And we even started out with the Gen 5 version, which has the peanut port heads on. You'll recognize these because they usually had the throttle body injection on them. They had the peanut port heads. They were flat tap at cams and not rollers like the Gen 6 stuff. So when we go to the wrecking yard, usually the Gen 6 is a little bit more desirable, but there's a lot of these running around. So we want to show you guys how to upgrade the peanut port stuff. I have a video up already and you guys can take a look at that. I'll put the... I'll put that right up here for a link and you guys can see what we did, but we wanted to start out because there was a second part to that video that I have not put up and that's what this is going to be. We'll show you how to upgrade even further from those modifications that we made to the peanut port stuff. But this was a Gen 5 motor from the wrecking yard. All we did was we took off the fuel injection stuff and we put a carburetor on. I'll show you what we did here. So we installed a, a YN dual plane intake manifold, the 8019 if you want the intake part number, and a Holley 750. We put our dyno headers that we always run on. This particular one was a 1992 with a throttle body injection, and we used that combination from the wrecking yard. So basically what we did was took the fuel injection off, put carburetion on, otherwise it was run stock. So it ran with headers and the carbureted induction system. We had the Mazir electric water pump on there as we always did, and run in this configuration are basically stock Gen 5 motor. Produced 334 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 448 foot-pounds, 447.6. You can see we ran this thing all the way down below 2,000 RPM or we're still making about 400 foot-pounds. That's kind of what these things were designed for. They were designed for truck motors, low RPM. I mean we're making peak power even with the carbureted dual plane uh, at uh, 4,300 RPM. Peak torque came at 3,500 RPM. So this was all about low speed power. But here's what happened when we installed a mild camshaft in here. We basically picked up power everywhere and this was a uh, Comp Extreme Energy 256 uh, hydraulic flat tap at camshaft. We also upgraded the valve springs to go with that camshaft. It was a 480-485 lift split. 212 218 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. We still had our still had the carbureted induction system on it, but that pushed power up to 378 horsepower and peak torque was up to 484 foot pounds of torque. Now we didn't load that one down as low, but it looks like on that 256 cam, which was fairly small, um, we would continue to make as much or more low speed power than the stock cam, even down at 2000 RPM. Basically it was a cam upgrade that improved power output everywhere. Now we didn't make a ton, but we did pick up quite a bit of power um, comparatively so compared to the stock combination. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we upgraded things uh, even more but retained the peanut port heads. After illustrating the gains from a simple minor kind of RV cam, we took things a little bit more serious and now we upgraded our whole motor. And we did that to illustrate what happens when you improve the power output by changing the compression. And we put a little bit more camshaft in it and we wanted to continue with the peanut port heads to show what the potential is with those heads because there are a lot of those running around. So here is the power output of our modified motor and then I will go ahead and show talk to you about what we did to it. So as you can see, we, we saw some very big power gains. Uh, our modified combination produced 451 horsepower and 549 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what we did. We basically took our Gen 5 apart and we replaced the factory pistons with a set of uh, dome pistons. So they were 18 to 20 cc domes. We also did a little bit more work to the heads. They were surfaced and given a valve job. We didn't, we only cleaned them up. We didn't take a bunch off of the deck. We did a valve job on them. We put another spring upgrade on them because we also increased the camshaft in this thing. Now we installed 
installed a, a, a slightly larger comp cam. It was an Extreme Energy 268 cam, and that thing offered a 515-520 lift split a 224-230 degree duration split and a 110 degree lobe separation angle. So it was a, a bit bigger camshaft than the small 256 that we had. So we had increased the compression and we actually increased the displacement as well because we went 30 over on these pistons. So we increased the displacement a little bit, increased the compression, increased the cam timing. We kept the stock heads. We just freshened them basically and, and upgraded the valve springs on them. We did change the intake manifold. We put a Speedmaster dual plane uh, air gap style intake manifold on there. And the interesting thing is that intake manifold was actually designed for these standard size ports, the standard oval port. So there was a mismatch. But as you can see, they seem to still work well. We also ran the 750 carburetor, the same 750 carburetors before. But you can see we picked up a, a pretty good bit of power and not just power at the top like you would expect with a cam. We picked up power everywhere. And now this thing was making 450 horsepower and almost 550 foot pounds of torque, which would be a stout little motor considering that we were still running the peanut port heads. So there's lots of potential there, especially for low speed torque. I mean, this thing, even at 2,500, was making almost 500 foot-pounds. So it was a good combination, but <laughs> there's more to be had. So let's find out now when we upgrade it and go beyond the peanut port heads, which we know we could make a little bit more power. We have ported some and gone near or, or right at 500 horsepower when we did porting on the peanut ports. But what we did, because there are so many heads available for the big block Chevy, we upgraded the heads, put more camshaft in it, you know, like you do. Let's find out what happened. After upgrading our peanut port combination, we decided to get a little bit more serious and then step up away from the peanut port heads to a more conventional big block Chevy head. These actually came from Profiler and they were 290cc intake ports, but they'd given the once over by uh, Bryce over at Dr. J's back in the day. And if we take a look at the flow rates and then the attending power output, we'll see that we were, <laughs> we were not using anywhere near what these heads had available for them because they flowed 368 CFM at 700 valve lift and 268 CFM on the exhaust. So they had plenty of power potential and we were just kind of scratching the surface of what these heads had to offer, especially after the porting. But we installed these profiler heads. We installed a set of 1.7 roller rockers. We installed a dual plane intake manifold, which we had been using dual planes on all the previous ones. But the change was, that this per, uh, the Performer RPM air gap intake from Edelbrock was actually a rectangular port intake manifold. And the reason that we chose that is because it was the best match for the roval <laughs> intake opening on these profiler heads. They were neither a traditional oval nor were they a traditional rectangular port, but the rectangular port intake seemed to match best on that particular uh, head opening. So th that's the intake that we use. We also stepped up in carburetor size from the 750 to a 950 because we knew that we were going to be making more power and we did not want to restrict that with carburetion size. Obviously, we also, to go with the cylinder head and the intake manifold upgrade, we stepped up in camshaft. So we knew that we were going to be pushing power higher up in the RPM range. We stepped up to still a flat tappet cam, a hydraulic flat tappet cam. Now, obviously, if we were to install a big solid roller cam, we could then take advantage of what those heads had to offer. But we still wanted this to be kind of a street strip kind of deal. So we installed a Comp Extreme Energy hydraulic flat tappet camshaft. This was a 284 camshaft, so it was fairly good size. It had a 574-578 lift split a 240-246 degree duration split on a 110 degree lobe separation angle. So healthy for a hydraulic flat tappet camshaft. And we combined all of this stuff after removing the, the peanut port heads. We still had the same short block. So we had our uh, small dome pistons in there. We had the stock connecting rods. We had the cast crank. We had the stock block, all of that stuff. And that will come into play later on after we add nitrous. So here's what happened when we made those upgrades to our uh, 454, which is actually was now a 461. And as you can see, the combination of the additional cam timing and our cylinder head change uh, pushed power up higher. We were now making peak power closer to 6,000 RPM, actually at 5,800, where we made 559 horsepower. Peak torque was still down here below 4,000 RPM. That's the dual plane intake working at 547 foot-pounds. As you can see, 
there was a loss below that compared to the previous combination with the peanut port heads and the milder camshaft. And we would expect that because as I said, we're pushing power production we're concentrating more at the higher RPM with that kind of camshaft. Now, as I said, that cylinder head could use a lot more camshaft and a lot more motor. We could run that those heads easily on a uh, 496 or even a 540. They have enough head flow to support <laughs> way over 700 horsepower if we wanted to take them there. But this combination, as I said, was not taking advantage of everything that they had to offer. But that didn't stop us from doing one more modification on this big block to show what can happen even with this basically stock components. All we had were forged pistons, but stock crank, stock rods, and stock block. Here's what we did. We did the we pushed the easy button and we just added nitrous to it. <laughs> So here's what happened when we put a Zex plate system on here. Go ahead and take a look at. Yeah, we ran a Zex uh, perimeter plate nitrous system on here and pushed the power up to 736 horsepower. So this was like 150 shot or so. And as you can see, if you were to put this combination, our 550 or 560 horsepower NA combination, and then add a simple plate kit, whether it's 100 or 150 or even a 200 shot with just the motor would definitely take, um, even with the factory crank and rods and the forged pistons, this combination would definitely take this kind of nitrous hit. If you took it out to the track, a big block, a Chevelle or a truck or anything with this kind of big block in here would definitely make... <laughs> <laughs> for an acceleration contest of the first order. So just think what you could run with nearly 750 horsepower and kind of an equal amount or nearly 700 foot-pounds of torque. Now, if we engage this thing earlier, which you would definitely do at the track, you'd have even more torque. So this would make a killer-like street strip combination, which is exactly what we were trying to do. So we've gone from our stock junkyard motor to something making nearly 750 horsepower, all with fairly simple modifications. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn for this testing on our Gen 5 454? Well, the first thing that should be obvious is any modifications that we make to this Gen 5 454, there's nowhere to go but up. Even sticking a mild camshaft in this otherwise stock motor with our carbureted induction system improved power everywhere from the bottom all the way to the top. And we see this again when we do the other modifications, changing compression, which adds power everywhere. We changed displacement a little bit, which adds power everywhere. And we did an upgrade to the cylinder head and kept our dual plane induction system. Basically, we improved the power everywhere. But after that, we start trading power. As we go up in cam timing, as we change our cylinder head with more, a lot more flow, which we did with that profiler head, we start shifting power production higher in the RPM range. And unfortunately, when we start doing that with wilder cam time especially, we start trading power down low. Now, there is a way to improve power everywhere, even with the wilder cam timing, and that's to improve the displacement. So if we go from a 454 to a 496, we'll improve the power everywhere, but that's another test for another day. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More big block, more small block, more all kinds of testing coming up.